We've all been told many times that it's important to back up our computers, but how many of you really do it? Backing up important documents and files with Time Machine is easy, and I'm going to show you how to do it all. Backing up your Mac can be a lifesaver in case your computer crashes, but it also comes in handy if you get a new Mac and you want to transfer some or all of your files to it more easily. In fact, I made a video that explains how to do all of that, too. I'll put a link to it in the description so you can go watch it after this one. And after you subscribe to our channel, of course. The easiest way to back up your Mac is to use Time Machine. It comes installed on every Mac, and it will routinely perform backups of your computer as long as it knows where to store that backup. When Time Machine is set up, it will create and store one backup every hour for the past 24 hours, daily backups for the past month, and one backup a week for all previous months until it runs out of space. Once the backup drive is full, it will make room by deleting the oldest backups. How big should your drive be? The unwritten rule is one and a half to two times the size of your Mac's hard drive. This MacBook Pro has 500 gigs of flash storage, so this two terabyte solid state drive has more than enough space. You don't need to have the drive connected to your computer all the time to use Time Machine. The drive can either be connected to your Mac or to your network via an Apple Time Capsule, an Airport Extreme base station, or another router with an available USB port. If you don't have any of those, I'd say just plug in your backup drive whenever you plug in your Mac to charge it. The first time you plug in the drive, you may see a prompt asking if you want to use it with Time Machine. Today we're going to say yes. If you don't get the prompt, you can select the drive for Time Machine to use by going to System Preferences, select Time Machine, and click the Select Disk button. If it's not properly formatted to work as a backup drive, Time Machine will ask if you want to format it. Doing so will erase everything on it, so make sure there's nothing on the drive you don't want to lose. You can also check the box to encrypt backups, which will require a password when you go to restore your Mac from a Time Machine backup. Make sure the checkbox next to Backup Automatically is checked. If there are some files you're not worried about preserving, click the Options button and you can add items for Time Machine to exclude. Excluding items will speed up a backup, but you can still use your Mac while it's happening since Time Machine goes about its business in the background. There's also an option to show Time Machine in the menu bar. From here, you can keep an eye on the status of your backup, stop a backup, or manually start one. In the event you ever need to restore your system or even a single file to a previous point in time, click the menu bar icon and choose Enter Time Machine. You'll see your previous Time Machine backups like cards in a Rolodex. Scroll through and find the one you want, and click the Restore button. And like I mentioned before, if you get a new Mac, you can use a Time Machine backup in conjunction with the Migration Assistant to set it up. Beyond Time Machine, iCloud can also be useful for backing up some files. Where Time Machine is a complete and total system backup, iCloud only stores some of your data. If you go to System Preferences, Internet Accounts, and then iCloud, you can see a list of everything that's currently being synced and stored in your iCloud account. Click the Options button next to iCloud Drive to see the files and folders that are stored there. It should include your Desktop and Documents folders, along with any apps you use that store data in iCloud Drive. Though if you have a lot of files in those locations, you may need to upgrade your iCloud storage plan. Or you can always stick with Time Machine. So have I convinced you? Are you going to start backing up your Mac since it's so easy? Let me know in the comments below, but if you choose not to, don't come crying to me. See you next time on How to Do It All.